Hello, welcome. Happy, happy hour and also happy Friday. We made it, TJF. I'm excited to have another um, IG Live conversation with Nicole DePonte. She's gonna be talking to us about her uh, really awesome new mixed media pieces she's been doing as well as watercoloring, which we're both super huge fans of. So I'm also, before she did all this, she started doing, hello. She started doing um, these amazing neckties that she would reconfigure. Hello, I'm gonna get Nicole in here right now. Let me add her. Um, many years ago, and it's, she, it is a form of mixed media too, in a way, right? Hello. Hi! How are you? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Sorry, it took me a second to navigate how to make this work. I know. It, it's not always super intuitive, the IG Live. No, but the invite that says, do you want to join is pretty easy. So I <laughs> also, met, I personally messed that up. So, well, welcome. Hello. Here. Hello. I you was look fabulous. You, I met you when you were like, you had done that. You have done many things. Yes. So many Creat things. <laughs> Creatively for many years. Yes. Yeah, posted a lot about your mixed media, but really when I met you, you we, this is how I met you. You were doing your necktie through Lady, neckties through Lady Astrofield. Correct. Correct. Um, and I can totally show you that side of the I studio know. for sure. Studio. <laughs> so this is I wore one because I was like homage. Oh, so, but like, like, I'm, I know like oh, this is nice. This is one of my pieces. <laughs> similar similar time period, I would say. Yeah. yeah. Wait, so, but now you've been doing all this new work, which is more watercolor, mixed media. What kind uh, of do, do this? Yeah. So before I even started doing Lillian Astorfield, before that was even like a thing, um, I was a full-time professional fine artist. I was showing in Boston. Um, I have a BFA in sculpture. I uh, went to mass art and, um, but I love paper. I love the idea of drawing through space and um, mixed media is kind of like, that's my language. That's where I love to like get in and like collect stuff, beads. And mm. So, I mean, all this stuff is interconnected. I think when you see yeah, the work, I, you'll see oh, how it, it like plays with everything. Yeah. This so is that, bringing like, things together also. You know what I mean? You're, you're it's like a mashup of things. It's a matchup, and you're doing this now with your 2D work. Correct, correct. So like, and the prints and the colors and everything, the language is all connected. And I, and one thing I know we're gonna talk about is like the balance of like making fine art or drawing or whatever, and how that is so um, important when we're making our fashion accessories, jewelry, whatever, like it all feeds together. But the fine oh, arts, oh. what's up? Yeah. Or what, it's like the differentiation is like the functional art versus the more uh, the non-functional, even though it serves a different purpose, right? Right, 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 With right. You, the practice you've been ha you've had before, during, and now are continuing and now putting it out there more in the world. It sounds yeah. like actually. Yeah, trying to kind of figure out how to navigate um, bringing that back Mm -hmm. on a major level um and showing be and and selling um yeah I would, would you of the work you also did before was is it in any way related to the work you're doing now in terms of fine, being a fine yeah the fine art yeah mm -hmm. oh yeah. yeah 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 like i um a lot of the collage the the larger pieces those those um have kind of uh grown from so when I started doing my work, it was very um, kind of minimal. There's a lot of white space, um, very organic, and it sort of started to grow into worlds, and then the world started to grow into characters. Um, so it, it definitely, like, has a narrative within it. Um, and then when I think of my ascots for Lillian Astrofield, I'm like, oh, that's totally what I'd wear if I was, like, living in this world. Like, that's my outfit. So it kind of, it all, <laughs> all kind of, like, goes together. And the hats too. I feel like you adorn yourself so beautifully with oh. other. Is you're an accessories lover also? I am. I am. You're, you buy jewelry. You're a jewelry lover. I know you buy. You love earrings. Totally. You buy earrings from all these different jewelers. You're really well accessorized. You're a hat person. This all goes together with it. And I can see that in your. Why don't you show us some pieces so like you can see some what, I'm, what we're referencing? 
Okay, so I'm gonna walk you over. Please bear with me because my um, my system of holding my phone while I'm at the at the desk is a little bit. Who knows if it'll fall down? So um, let's it's see. Real scripted, you know. <laughs> ooh, so, ooh. So here's a piece um, that you'd find um, if I was showing Lillian Asterfield. Uh, yeah. So it's it's snaps similarly to Megan's piece. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm gonna just I'll um, throw this on for you guys. I Unless love we... I see this so much when you said I make such a connection with characters in your work and this whole look. Yeah. Boom. Awesome. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna do this one handed and this is gonna be pretty good. Okay. I know. Hold on. I'm good. But I, I don't know. It's like, you know, I'm starting to sweat and get nervous here. Okay. So you can kind of see. Oh, gorgeous. This yeah. Is so like if That's you were hanging out with this lady, you'd be totally wearing an ascot, right? Oh, she's beautiful. So she, yeah. So this is one of my collage pieces. Um, she is uh, a little bit of everything. There's watercolor, there's ink, there's acrylic, there's clippings, what? magazine clippings, yeah, what? fashion what? sewing. Quartz. What is that? That's sewn on? That's embroidery or? No, that's glitter. I, I'm, I know it's terrible for the environment, but I am a lover of glitter. Me too. <laughs> I can't stop. I like have so many jars. Really? Wait, so how did you apply glitter into that, into those areas? Like kind of, how did, what, is that a paper? Did you glue? Is it like old school when you're a little kid and you glue and make a little area? I'm insane. You know how I'm insane. I will tell you exactly how I do it. Um, so I am going to turn and show you this piece too. So, oh, uh, my solar flare. Sorry, guys. So this is another piece that has, it's a little bit easier to see, that has glitter on it. Um, mm. I'm going to hide the sun. And gold and, or flat gold also on there? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I take varnish and I will literally pour, um, I'll get like the I forget what it's called. Um, it's super glossy and a little bit more viscous. And I will pour glitter in and then I will like, with my paintbrush, each glitter, I'll move them into <laughs> in, into being sort of like okay. the, the puddle I want it to be. <laughs> no, but this is controlled and really, but that's great though, because you are getting the so chaos effect. Yeah. I, I immediately, I was like, ooh, yes, I could yeah. see. How has texture too. You're getting a nice texture with it. Yeah. So oh God, sorry guys. I'm so. This is very pro. I'm telling you. You're fine. Yeah. Okay. Wait. Let's see what it'll say. <laughs> okay. We're kiboshing that, and we're gonna lean you here. Okay. Hi guys. All right. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. All right. Like, wait. So, okay. So you use a resin to apply, and the, but that one has more 3D, whereas the other one looks more like a like it's incorporated more 2D. Just so, splatter? Yeah. So um, it's it's a, a finer grain glitter. It's, <laughs> um, it's a finer grain glitter. Um, mm -hmm. And wow. basically that was spread pretty flat on the paper. And then um, the other glitter, which I think I have right here, is like a coarser grain. So Ooh. yeah. So it feels a little bit more <laughs> minerally. In there one by one? Or well, I'll pour it. I'll pour it. I'm not like totally insane. Like yeah. I'll pour it and then I start to kind of like spread it out. I mean, it can get like there. It goes sour fast. Like if you don't keep your <laughs> yourself together, you're going to like glitter your entire life for days. No, glitter is one of those things that it really gets everywhere. Oh, yeah. It's every All of a sudden you're like, why am I? What, what's in my mouth? And you're like, oh, glitter. it's yeah. glitter. For days, I have this roll-on body glitter because sometimes I want to be sparkly. Because who just, doesn't? Of course. So that is not a good idea, though. It's, <laughs> it's, you, it's a multi-day, multi-wear, multi Yeah, like eyeshadow. It stays on. Like I could, I could use the things, and it's still with me forever. Yeah. So yeah. Great though, because you're incorporating it into your work, and it's I love it because it feels <laughs> it's like jewelry or like special, you know? Yeah, I think that there's some. Um, there's a magical quality to it. I'm, I'm really, really into like the, like Tim Burton and like, um, 
oh, big surprise. Yeah, like, I'm, and I'm just thinking of like films that really get me, you know, like, um, mm. do I love, uh, and now I'm, I had a list and now it's all going away. But anyway, so like, I, I like imagination. I like fantasy. Yeah. I like things where I'm going to go and I'm just going to adventure. You, are you creating stories for the characters? Can you tell us some of these stories? Because this is, that's a very Tim Burton. I feel like you're colorful Tim Burton. Like a, a little bit more, a little happier. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's some dark, there's some dark, you know, there's, yeah. um, I mean, I'm a lot, I use um, body parts a lot. So I think some people can say that's a little dark. So I love hands and I love arms and legs. And so I'm, you know, I'm dismembering these like images, you know, in a sense. So there's, that's kind of, that's a little dark, but I like that creepy, yeah. that sort of creepy beauty. It's why you stare at a bug, you know, like you see the biggest worm ever and you're like, I can't stop looking. I just want to watch it crawl across the, the dirt. So that's, uh, that's kind of like the, the, the space, but um, the characters, you know, it's funny. I'm so stream of consciousness when I'm doing my collages. So I'll clip out things that interest me and start to arrange, but I'm really not, um, I'm really just kind of like letting things sort of unravel. And then once things are laid out, um, I can show you the piece that I'm working on now. I know Megan is dying to see this. Um, <laughs> Basically, that's, this prompts a million questions for me because I'm like, wait, so do you start with the drawing? Do you cut out pieces and just go from pieces that you, do you start with the pieces or you start with the, and do you start with the drawing first and then fit the pieces that you cut out to the drawing or the pieces dictate the composition? I, I start, with the clippings first there it's sort of i work on a catalyst as a catalyst i use it as a catalyst so like um i'm going to show you an example to try and better describe Ooh, so this, what is this? this piece is in process so these ladies um started you know they were the characters that started the whole story and then i kind of grew off of them um how did you get the how did you make the just go back to the characters first how did you make those characters are they multiple pe multiple parts put together yes obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously but it looks to me also you get a seamless effect because of the colors you're mm -hmm. putting them in the same color and you have a more black and white effect happening with them and you have color around them so it makes it feel very uniform right like your perspective um gets a little bit sort of twisted but you you sort of feel okay with going going along with it you know like it's it's, it's like they look like they could exist in reality because of the way you put them. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. and I, just, I love being able to mix the different textures with the watercolor and then use some flat. Um, so you can kind of see there's like a lot in there. Mm -hmm. This mm. metallic watercolor that I've fallen in love with. Yes, and it looks kind of neon. What, how did you get the little drawing? Did you draw underneath that and then watercolor over with pencil? How do you get that effect? So the underneath part is watercolor. Um, and then what I did was watercolor the, the metallic over it. I don't know if you guys can see. Uh, oh, yeah, totally. I can totally see that because you're getting yeah. depth that way, I think. Yeah. And then you have these like crazy blotches that grow out of the moss and like there's some pencil in there. So it's, it's really got, yeah. And I mean, each bit sort of grows off the other which sounds insane but so where was the start uh so this this section right here is is the start of it and then i knew i wanted to put a door here and when i put the door in the lady kind of emerged here and then you know, why not have a flower and some seaweed <laughs> and there's some there's some of that crazy there we go gotta have it when i see too i can see there's kind of like a little stitching to the left of that yeah there's um it's some, some embroidery in there and then this is some gold thread that i stitched in and i just this keep kind of huh this is really cool because you're doing with the thread what you're doing with the glitter watercolor you're giving these textures mm -hmm. you're kind of making things in a way I yeah love that. Mi mixing a lot of a lot of different things to get neat effects so that when you step back and you look at it, you're like, all right. Yeah. I'm totally going to together. All together. Yeah. That's what you're, I feel like you're trying always to achieve. Is there something that this one, is there a story for this one? You know, it's, 
I, I think that there's a lot of my work is very, um, it's very personal. So I do think that there's, there's little bits in there. Um, I love having little love stories. So, you know, these, oh. guys, <laughs> these little cuties right here definitely are having their little moment. Um, I feel like there's K I S S I N G sitting in a tree. Oh a yeah. And she's got the oh. best little boob. Do you see her little boob? Yeah. Is her favorite part. Little Look at that little boob. boob. Yeah. It's great. It's really, really great. But uh, yeah, I, I, again, as I'm, I, people will ask me what different narratives I put in and it's kind of like for you, like go in, like I want my audience to like, Mm. and have a wacko time trying to kind of like like they'll connect with it and then they start sort of looking and they look closer and then you can see the wheels turning and I, I'm just that's the happiest part for me I just want to listen to how everybody perceives it and remember know. any of the like some things people have told you I, I am always fascinated people I feel like my pieces are a Rorschach test and I feel like these ones really your pieces really feel like a Rorschach test in some ways, I can imagine people having really, like, telling you their story of what mm -hmm. that means to and getting mm -hmm. pretty old. Yeah. I have a couple of collectors that have, um, I have one collector who just really thinks that her life is, like, must be on a very similar thread to mine. <laughs> like, she's like, I'm just, I see me in your work, and I'm just like, that's awesome. Yes. That's awesome. And she just, she just gets it. Um, another, another client has uh, a piece, you know, she has a bird and like the bird was like the big thing for her. And I do, I love putting in tropical birds are kind of one of my favorites. I feel like tropical birds in a way, the whole, some of the compositions almost feel like they're hidden birds. When you look far away from it, once you get mm -hmm. close details, because I see feathers, a lot mm -hmm. of them, oh, you love feathers and have used them in your work before. So I see little like feathers and leaves, kind of those elements peeking out. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of, there's a lot of that, the textures that I'm obsessed with that, that flow into everything, you know, I mean, it's like, I like to watch watercolor dry. I mean, it's like, or, or the colors mix. Like I could sit there for yeah. days and yeah. just watch it. And that's why I use it. Cause it like literally just keeps me so zen. Mm -hmm. It feels yeah. good. Oh, I know totally. I yeah. love watching those too. Anytime it's like palette with paint and people are like putting it on. Like, you know, you've seen those people just like with the palette knife and doing mixing, color. Mixing, mixing the color. I'm just like, oh, yeah. yeah. That is so yeah. really meditative. Hi, Ashley. And then when people, the Ashley. water. Oh, hey. <laughs> oh, yeah. <yes. laughs> Lover of jewelry. <laughs> Lover of jewelry. Also, I feel like Ashley could be part of your world, too. I feel like some of your characters could wear some of her earrings, right? Oh, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. If I could layer some of her textures, like, into my work, I would be oh, so happy. Yeah. I yeah, could yeah. totally. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I really yeah. do. Okay. Wait, okay. okay so do you, do you have any stories? Have anybody else, has anybody else told you something, like, super crazy? But I love that. No. I mean, no. I just, I have to say that, like, my work, I know, I haven't had any, like, super crazy stories, but I'm sure that they're there. Like, I do have a friend of mine who um, has a couple of my apartment complexes, which are, if you go on my Instagram, you'll see, um, they'll pop up here and there. They take a really long time for me to make. They're illustrative, so they're very different from this work. Um, but he just, like, sits there, and every time I see him, he's, like, he has uh, um, two really cool pieces, and he's, like, I just, stay, like, I'll see another thing. He's, like, all of a sudden, I'm standing in the window of that building, and then I'm seeing this other thing, and, like, it's, yeah, so that's very cute. And I think that there, you start to kind of investigate, the more you see it, the more you investigate, and that's, I, I think that's really, really interesting. I so I... Yeah, and also the thing, the that, term that I just learned is maximalist, which I never thought of myself as a maximalist. And I'm like, I'm totally maximalist. Totally, totally. Hat and the this and the this and the earrings and the glasses, the whole shebang. I'm like, give me all the color. I will wear all the color at once if I can. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but together in a way that makes sense. 
Yeah, which I think is my superpower. Thank God, because that could go, that could be bad. <laughs> but that's what you're doing with the composition of these pieces too, because you're taking mm -hmm. things and you're thinking about color, you're balancing the green with the red. I'm looking, I'm staring at the pieces behind you. Mm. Yeah, so I, are those? <laughs> yeah. so, so, so these right here are, are I'm gonna, yeah. these are tissue print watercolors. I'm gonna show you one. Okay. I started one earlier today to show you how to do it because oh, cool. it's super, super fun. Yeah. The, the effect is gorgeous. Yeah, right? Is yes. that cool? It's just, it's tissue paper cut into shapes, layered and adding water and some watercolor. What? That's yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So, okay. Yeah, let's move on to that. Let me show you this. So is I did a like a little. Like a, that's, I feel like that is an um, almost minimalized version of what you're doing in one of the more, some of the more complicated mixed media pieces with shape. <laughs> taking mm -hmm. the Yeah, show us. I'm like. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm going to show you. Um, you're going to stare at my face for two okay. seconds while I get this one tool that'll make my life a lot easier. Okay. So I'm going to, I made this little piece. Oh. Yeah. So it's, I think it's a little, it's a little ditty. Um, I had to take my ass cut off. So sorry about that. Um, <laughs> so what I did was I cut out all of these pieces are all cut out of tissue. It's all tissue. And what I'll do is I'll do a droplet of water on the paper and then I'll lay the tissue down and then I'll add a droplet of water on top of the tissue. Mm-hmm. And then what I did here is I added a little watercolor. So I added like a navy here and a navy here. And it sort of turned mm -hmm. into this purple, which can happen. Mm -hmm. um, and what I'm going to do is hopefully not totally destroy this. Ooh. Okay. So I'm going to take some of these pieces of... Sorry, tell me if I'm getting crooked here. No, you're perfect. I love this. What a cool process. How satisfying too, right? Right. So it's not totally dry yet. Usually I wait till it gets really dry and the tissue will curl up and you'll be able to just pick it up. Mm -hmm. But, you know, for the sake of time and showing you guys kind of how to do it. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit like operation. Yeah, it is totally. So do you see how it's, it, it's just the color from the tissue that gets printed on the paper. Yeah. And you get this like ghosty effect. And so yeah. you go through and you can let some parts dry more. Um, but this is kind of, you know, what it'll look like. Um, as it dries, you'll get these cool rings around the edge and then it sort of all blends together. And that's how, you know, I got kind of like this, and you can keep overlaying. Mm -hmm. You can do one and then you can add darker tissue to it in different colors. So it could be a really fun thing to do with your kids too. Like I can see that being a fun project at home to do. Because um, you're basically transferring the dye to the paper from the tissue. Yeah, yeah, you are. And you can, I mean, you can add color to it and the more water, the more faded. And it's really interesting to see how the kind of colors interact. Um, and these are, <laughs> two shades of blue, a turquoise and a really light blue. So I thought that was kind of fun to share. I love that. It's like, I feel like, cause I've seen you also do it where you put water down in droplets and then add mm -hmm. color to all the, that's a similar, I feel like that's another process that gets a similar effect, but you do that quite a bit too. And cause that's, it, it, it's saturating the paper in a way with the, and yeah. you're dyeing it. Yeah. yeah. And we can do that too, if you want to see something. Yeah, that is so <laughs> satisfying because I've seen you do it a little bit, but I know, and I haven't seen you do it in a while. I think that was one of the, you've done that before, and I haven't maybe I haven't I don't know because you've been doing more mixed media. What? Because you're doing part of the mixed media. You just had an opening, also, right? Yeah. So the opening was um, my gems. So I did these like really big, um, kind of like uh, gem shapes. I would I would say I have a piece up here that I. Oh, cool! Yeah, sure. Yeah. So. Now, Oh, yeah. So this is one of them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. It's like wood. Yeah. It's like stone. It's yeah, it's kind of. It's, like, it's too in a way. It has like, the, it doesn't feel like stone, marble, something. 
Yeah, and I'm sorry, it's reflective because it has. Um, how did you? Uh, how did you do that? Did you freestyle paint that, or? So I'm. Um, I'll. Sh I can give you a little show and tell if you'd like to see. Um, you know, because it's like it's one of those things where we all have our own taste with color. Um, so it'd be fun to have you know see what other people come up with. And I, um, the main thing is that uh, the different materials you use will dry um, at different times. I'm not mm -hmm. using my words correctly, but like it, it'll like dry at different times. So you'll get these like rings. Um, and the only, I, I had to, through just experimentation, that's how I kind of came up with this process in particular. It's a lot of just trial and error. Um, I'm not really a sketcher, I'm a doer, so. Yeah, um, and you have, a, I have such process because you're using, you're, uh, you, you are really into the craft of this as well, mm -hmm. you know, and you, you experiment. I, I totally do this too with materials similar. Yeah, and it's fun. It's fun to get dirty and like figure it out. And also like um, the big thing that I've learned over the past year or so with my fine art, and I think it's so important for everybody is one, collect as many materials and play as much as possible. Like just yeah. get a bunch of stuff and be a mad scientist. The other is don't. <laughs> yes. Don't I be proud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't be yeah. precious about your stuff. Don't yeah. be precious about your stuff. Like you completely. You have to keep working and keep making. And just because one drawing just looks like a monster and isn't you're not into it doesn't mean that it isn't doesn't play a crucial crucial role in your retrospective, let's say. Like it's like you've got to think of everything you're doing as a like your whole lifetime of work. So every little piece is going to make you think and trigger something, which I think is so amazing for us when we create. Like not everybody has that, you know? Like I didn't know that. <laughs> I, still have to, I I I completely get this. I love this. I I, I love this about you too because we both think this way. I you get you dive deep mm -hmm. you're not afraid to do it or put yourself mm -hmm. out there and try something different too and that's yeah that's oh really if you do like you you won't um yeah you won't have that eureka moment where you're like okay so you know i do a show and maybe you don't find your audience there but you have that one person that triggers some idea and then you make a whole body of work i mean like that's the that's the key it's you know to to working through stuff. So here, I'll get, <laughs> it's working. I'm gonna stop yammering and I'm gonna show you. Okay. So ooh, let me ooh. make sure that I have a couple of tools here. I was really well prepared um, before. So here's my paper. Really exciting, huh? I love so it. I'm, Opportunity. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just. Mm. Create some water puddles okay so i'm gonna make this like kind of long stone i'm sort of into them now and i think of them as gemstones what why, why do... this do you think there was it was like this is because it's a little bit different it's not as colorful it's a little bit more natural yeah i think i just like am so I got really into this one Instagram account that I follow. Um, that's like a geology kind of thing. And then I, my jewelry friends who do a lot of like stone work that are like crazy stones and mixing stones. Um, I just, I, I, I just love to go look and see all the stuff, you know, I, and I'm saying stuff, I shouldn't say stuff, but that's like my little kid brain is speaking right now. Um, yeah, I just, yeah. Say again, I'm sorry. I just was talking. No, I are a jewelry person, so I feel like you you will geek out with jewelers about their materials too, you know? Yeah. I mean, I love it. I love it. I love metal. I love stone. So, okay, so let me let me just show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm taking India ink. Okay. And get ready, you guys excited. I am. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's so <laughs> Sorry. I love it. This is my favorite part. So what the ink is doing is it's pushing the water away. It's like, get away from me. It has oil in it too, right? That, is that why it's creating that effect? 
Or is there something else in the chemical composition? I, you know, it's, I, I need to nerd a little bit more. Um, so another, other inks that I really, really enjoy using are um, these guys. I'm going to get the color right. Oh, goodness. We'll do like a blue. So I love these. Yes, yeah, so satisfying. Totally agree. So it's like, it looks like it's one handed. Creating these like uh, Marvel agate. It's gorgeous. I love it. Okay, so sorry, that was a joy shot for a second. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of color here. I'm going to add a little color here. Maybe we'll do something right on the end here. So it's like really saturated. And then I'll take a dropper and I'll just add some water in. Oh, so you're kind of, you're changing the little, oh, I love the water technique. Yeah. So you're just kind of like playing, you know, like you're yeah. going to, you're going to figure it out as you go along. Um, and this is going to look totally different when it dries. Mm -hmm. And one thing I. Well, completely. What's up? You don't have control completely over this process. No, 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 yeah. no, no, no. You just kind of just got to go and then you just leave it. And then you can add more color, you know, depending on white. If you add like a white to it, a white ink, it'll get kind of a neat milky thing. Ooh. This is like a green. I love it. I love the bringing the colors in too. And then I like... I really was cool about the adding the water. That's so I like because then you are trying to control it a little bit, maybe change the shape a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you can really, you can really play. Onto but your board. Do you always tape your paper down? Yeah, I well, really, um, this paper is going to end up um, wrinkling a little bit because it's a thinner paper. I don't have my heavyweight paper because, um, you know, it's a pandemic and you can't yeah. get all the things you want to get. <laughs> so well, <laughs> I'm waiting on my shipment of good paper. Um, but you want to um, you, you want to uh, saturate one of the sides and let it dry fully and then work on it. And yeah. Taping it down is really great because that'll keep it relatively flat. If you're using this much water, it's going to want to. That was exactly the question because I feel like with a lot of water, you can really warp the piece and then it has the. So how do you balance that? So the, I like your taped, your tape technique here. It doesn't. Like, sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. I also am like, I love when my paper becomes an object. Not everybody loves it. Um, so I don't hate that. Um, and I tend to, when I frame my work, I tend to float it. So um, the paper, the edges are, yeah, are free. So it's like, you know, archivally adhered to the mat. So you just float it on that. And yeah, and then you can kind of see the edge of the paper. Because most of the time I'm painting to the edge of the paper on all my paper. I have a really hard time not doing that. I, I try. Know. Is there... <laughs> A problem is there a problem with that? No um, I think sometimes when people want to like frame the work or something, I don't know. I don't know. It's everybody's taste. I just kind of like I'm all in the process and making it so I don't I don't get bothered by that stuff. Go towards the edges. I guess I'm it's been a while since I've done like proper like laying it out, you know, where you remember color you did the color test, like color theory, and you did the little paintings with the pixels. We had to lay it out nice. Part of your job was to do things exact exact now i'm like oh no never never again no no this is how i figure it out oh. <laughs> i just like i have all my like you know my benchmarks is what i call it you know and then i'm like oh that color works oh that color looks good with that color i didn't even know that sure i'll use that next time you know we'll test, we'll, we'll test. yeah yeah i i love um i was thinking about tara's interview and like how you know she really does like to have rules and i love that i love i love have i love setting a couple of challenges Ooh. but on the other side of it i'm such a like go with the flow so it's a, much the opposite of of her process but i so admire it that i'm like oh i should really so for if you were to set rules for yourself do you do that for each do you do it loosely in some way because like i feel like with the gemstone you did set a rule for yourself in a way because you you stuck to more like a gem gems 
more neutral colors, different from your mixed media work, right? Yeah. Hi, Sally. Um, sorry. I, I will set palettes. I have to set palettes sometimes. Like if I'm doing, so I have two halves of my brain that controlled the maximalist and the more reserved, which will do is like these pieces back here. So when I'm doing something like that and I'm really like, I want to keep it minimal, I, I have to, I have to, it's like, okay, so I'll just use, you know, this brush on um, maybe two, possibly three colors. Um, you know, maybe I just stick to a shape um, a lot of those tend to be really good ways for me to go in between the really sort of crazy big pieces. So I'll take a pause and I'll do a couple of minimal kind of almost like they're exercises or something. Or a visual break a little bit, right? Yeah. 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 Cause I could go, I mean, I could queen, which is, um, I was just saying hi to, um, is a piece that was, is definitely a maximalist piece. I am, I, painted all the way to the edges of that piece there is like no white space at all and so that um took months to make and I could, probably could have still gone forever with that that piece of end stop myself you know so it's like it keeps me it keeps me in check I think doing some of these more minimal pieces very balanced are you working are you working on like one collection at once are you doing multiple things at once does it go back and forth it sounds like it goes back and forth doing yeah a more intense yeah. piece and then breaking it up with these other yeah, I, um, a, a collage piece can take months. Sometimes I'm on it and it'll take me a week, but most of the time it takes me a long time. So I'll do, so the piece that I showed you with the, the ladies in the boat and the birds faces, um, that piece has been ongoing um, since last summer. I can't remember when I started it, but it's been ongoing for a while. So I'll put it in the flat file and I'll take a pause Mm -hmm. I'll work on some other things. Sometimes Lillian Astorfield is, you know, when I'm doing shows, I have to kind of like focus on that. Um, so, and then I'll step back and put it on the drawing table, take a look and, you know, keep working at it. Um, but That's yeah, the last series that I fully did um, was my, my show in Baltimore. Um, did you have to like, did they quickly, was it, how did you come, how did that happen basically? Because You've been doing shows and you've been showing the 2D work, but this seemed like a more, a big opening. The one that was in Baltimore? Yeah. Um, so that was, uh, when did that open? God. February? January? No, close in, close in, well, yeah, it was kind of, it's, I, I was part of the ongoing collection, but the launch of that show, that is, so, um, Felsbar Studio is, or Gallery and Studio is, was, is owned by a ceramist friend of mine who um, had approached me when I first did um, my first craft show with my fine art. Um, and we had started kind of talking about showing there. And um, yeah, I showed there, I've been showing there for three years. The oh gallery has closed obviously through all this, um, but um, yeah, now I've totally lost my train. That had been, so you started showing at the craft because you had shown your fine art years ago. Mm -hmm. Took a pause doing L Lady Ad. No, I was this doing everything together. I did everything together. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Cra craziness. But then you showed, uh, you brought the 2D work finally to craft shows. Maybe three years ago, I guess you're saying, right? The first yeah, the time first and that's when you got approached by Baltimore. Yeah, the first time was three years ago. And then I did, oh, I did, I did my one show and I just did the fine art. Yeah, that was interesting. It's interesting. It's a hard, I think, um, art. I'm just, I've been showing for a long time and I've been doing this work for a very long time, but I haven't done the art fair with it. And it is a whole yeah. different, wow. I mean, it's a different, it's a different thing. I can sell Lily and ask if you like, you know, I mean, just throw it on somebody and it's fun and we're, you know, jumping around but with my fine art it's um huh. you know oh. it's more personal you have to be more patient um a lot quieter um let people sort of dive in and engage um and so I had to learn a whole new oh. set of skills um I didn't even think about that because you have to this oh my god so you know me I know I know you that's why I'm surprised and I, I understand <laughs> 
they're not they're not able to actually physically put this on somebody like you're doing this it's not as no i in someone's space yeah i mean you so we love to move i've seen i you know you love engaging and physically engaging with your with your clients just like i do like i love to dance in my booth like that's my thing but with fine art it's you know you're you no know, you're not you're um you're not you can't I, it's so when well, i started print hmm? how do you how did you like how did you change your style then i i well um i i i try to really listen and and learn from body language um and how people are talking to me if they're starting to talk softer and want to step away or like you know you kind of like watch the body language but um i think just trial and error i had to i had to just kind of go in and and mess up a couple times to sort of figure <laughs> out how to, how to do it right you know like you're like oh I, that person did not want to oh, talk to me they wanted to oh, look at the work <laughs> like telling people kind of the process behind how you made this i because it's a little bit different because each piece is so personal and in one of a kind and very, you, you approach each material very interest in a very like special way and there's a story. And you have to find your words. I'm, I, you know, I, I, I'm gregarious, but like I sometimes I struggle to really figure out how to share with somebody like the space that I'm in when I'm making it. I just, and even now when we were, you know, when I'm showing you the work and you're, you know, do you have a story? And I'm like, that's like, the work is so about being this stream of consciousness that is like a dream, you know, it's not, it doesn't particularly have a story. It sort of has kind of like a choose your own adventure, you know? So, yeah. so I can tell people how I, how I make it, which is like, you know, I, you know, it's like, it's like, oh, do you want to know how, what kind of glue I use? Because that doesn't sound interesting to me. <laughs> a whole world. You're creating a world where these people live when these yeah. cute, they're, they're, they're going somewhere and they're doing things and they're having personal interactions. Yeah. You're setting them up as little, having these, like, they're together. They're not just all separated, which I think that's mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. It's, like, it's interesting. It's yeah. like, it's definitely, I'm still learning a lot. Um, and I'm an introvert, so... I end up, you know, spending all of my, you know, excited, fun blah, energy when I'm at shows. And then when I'm here, I'm pretty quiet. Um, and I spend a lot of time alone. So like, you know, that's also something to kind of like get past when you're talking about your, your work, you know, I, it's, um, and so emotional based that I, I, I'm starting to ask more questions. Like, Ooh, we have a question. Wait a minute. What was that? Good. That's a long one wanted to take the process actual process i love the struggles the process that worked out yes i agree well because there's the actual materiality of the piece but there's also the there's more happening beyond that as well mm -hmm. fine art does this mm -hmm. and also it you don't have to have a story i like the fact that you're letting people make their own story in a way too because it's not all of, it's about the spectator right and it's also theirs when they, if they decide to acquire it, like, and take it home, it's theirs. It's their story. Mm -hmm. Like, they got a piece of me, but it's, you know, I want it, I want it, I want them to feel like it's, you know, it's like their little companion. But I think also with the ties, like the ties, I'm just all of a sudden had a moment where I'm like, well, the ties had a whole story before I started, you know, transforming them into ascots. Like, who knows what, you know, gentlemen or whomever was wearing it, you know, like what that story is all about. And that's always intrigued me as well. So like, I think that, you know, it all kind of ties together. Oh, so good. So good. Thank you for that. It just happened. It just happened. <laughs> Wait, so were you, were you going to show us earlier pieces before some of this? Are they, because we can see what some of this progression of your 2D work. That's, yeah. Um, can I? Will I? Yeah. Uh, hold on. Well, I, you know, I'm gonna have to take it out. Okay. Or we're gonna show us more pieces because I love, I like, you know, looking at things and all the textures. Yeah, we can go. Um, did you hear the flat file is open? Yeah. Wait, how many flat files? Do you, what's? Um, I have just well, 
my studio is on my third floor, which I'll tell you, carrying a flat file up to your third floor is really, is, is not no. the best move. So I'm just trying to find, um, I do have them. I'm just trying to find the drawer that they exist in. I think it's this one. Okay. So you're going to look at me for one second. It's going to be weird, but let me see if I can. Oh, no, I'm also, you're like talk about your hidden sticks too. Like you've been. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So guys, I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I'm somebody who just likes to make things. You love like, making stuff. I love that. I just like to make things. We're going to go through my smaller flat files over here. Yeah, so I'll show you a stick. I'll show you a stick. But let me show you this first because I can't, I can know, I'm going to. I see them in your 2D world also. You're making them in 3D now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is, this is that apartment complex. I'll let you stare at that while I look for. You on your Instagram. I did. And so these are the ones you're saying that take months? They're doing, it's really intricate in the. Oh. So, so this piece right here is um, circa 2008. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. So just see. Sparkly too. <laughs> what is that? What, what did you incorporate there? Those are sequins. I love it. Oh. So Ooh. they were like kind of morphic kind of crazy little it remind me of insects in some way because this, oh. okay, this is my Rorschach test but for me because we were talking about it like beautiful the beautiful insects before mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah gross I... beautiful insects yeah like you know eggs. how did you is that resin or how did you yeah that it's, a, it's a varnish so there's different viscosities to varnishes that you can get to play with so that's a really oh, thick, God. yeah. So I would just pour a blob of it and you, it takes forever to dry, but like you never know what's gonna happen. So even some of these guys, I know that's like kind of creepy uh, and gross to get really close to. It's like I taking love, oh, it's so, it has such texture. I can't even see that before. Oh, I love that. So there's like straps of purses and shoes. So yeah, there's that. I'm trying oh. <laughs> there's another one in here i'm like this is like oh this is really this is really back in the day this is this is 2003 Ooh. okay close i like the clo Ooh. Okay. it looks um it's amazing what is what is up there what's that is that beads little beads that you set in resin yeah. or more oh. beads little hairy bits yeah so Look for down level. What did you say? I'm sorry. You know when you look at a cell structure and you go further and you're further and you're like, oh, there's little things happening, little things happening, and little things happening there. Oh, oh, depth. like lots of depth. Macro. Oh, so good. Yeah. Get, get so in good. there. Yeah, so good. Oh, and so, okay, where are we on to now? The sticks? Is that what you wanted? I like the stick. I, okay, because the sticks have like a new kind of like little. <laughs> this is part of the world too because I in your mixed media work they're happening they are happening it's getting a dark in here i wonder if you can see it i so it's like i have the okay so there's a stick okay closer, <laughs> okay, closer. Okay. so you see you see the shape from far away it kind of sticks out of the wall it has these like leaves these i'm sorry feathery leafy things Ooh, that you built off of this yeah your mom is saying hi hi I she has this in navy, FYI, everybody. Yeah, it's awesome. So yeah. Oh wow! I'm trying, did you I'm trying to decide whether to go. Say again. I keep talking. Did over you, you. See that dark green, the stick, the base of the mm -hmm. stick, and then yeah. gold, gold leaf. What is that? Gold shiny. Paint? It's just gold, like it's just like gold acrylic paint. It's kind of like whatever. It's like it's like cooking a dinner out of whatever's in the fridge. I just kind of went through my materials. <laughs> I'm making sticks. So this is my favorite stick and I'm sorry that you can't totally see it because it's gotten dark in here. Ooh. Um, but it's black and has white dots and it has these like beautiful feathers. 
that were originally part of my mobiles that I used to make. Um, and so I've been adding them to this driftwood. And the story behind the driftwood is that when everything started, um, we were still going to some of our favorite nature places to just walk and like in the beginning, I couldn't make art. I just needed to kind of process and I needed to get out of the city. And Providence is small. It's not like a super, super big city, but like I, I just needed to get to the ocean in the woods. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we would go for these walks by the water and I was finding all this driftwood. I like love cedar. Um, and I was just picking up, I would just pick up these sticks. And I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with these sticks, but I like these sticks. And so I'd pick it up and I'd like carry it for a ridiculous amount of time from like our full walk to back, which is like, Dedica you know, Brian, dedication. Like, why, why don't you just leave it here and we'll pick it up on the way back? You know, and so, I'm sorry. Just in case it's gone though, someone else might I pick know. up the stick. Uh, well, I have a story because I had two sticks I really liked and we couldn't find them on the way back. Well, right. I got you. So you're like done. I'm done. Yes. No. I've my always favorite. My favorite is the big. I have a big log in the garden. Like it's, it's huge. It's like a log with these big like branches, but it's all. Um, it's got to be cedar. It's all. It's a huge piece of driftwood, and you know we, we were smart. We took it you on the way back. Brian and I had to both carry it together. Like we both were like carrying it you know and it's like this trail and there's people i mean six to ten feet away but like we're carrying this big yeah so it's in the backyard you know what i mean like you're that's a lot of dedication i have to say it's gonna be amazing there's gonna be so much gold on it you have no idea oh there's plans for this oh yes okay <sighs> this is i'm oh i'm excited is it gonna yes. be a function just a non-functional like sculpture type of thing, maybe. It's going to be a non-functional, but it's going to be freestanding. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Well, it's I'm going to that you have over the painting. Would you ever incorporate them? Because it looks like it should be with you have it on your easel, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have the painting underneath them like that almost looks like it should be together. I want to do a full wall of just all of the sticks. <laughs> I like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like oh, my stairway going up to my um you know my the second floor has like this big wall and I have that this banner that I made because I did some fabric with some of my images um and I made this big banner so I have hung there but I'm like no 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 the sticks <laughs> like all of them and what? some of them and so I've already brought Brian if for all of you guys who don't know Brian's my partner and he's a, a fabricator and stone carver and many other things which were nonprofit is really cool stuff here in Providence whatever anyways very creative um so we're in the we're talking about how to mount the sticks oh this is so trying to come up with custom hardware well so when Laura was talking about her pins and the pin mounting I'm sitting there like geeking out I'm like oh my god my the sticks, pin mounting you know? pins you can make a pendant or a pin and you just slide it on based on the pin back. I was like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's I just, like I totally for what you're doing. I lost my mind. I lost my mind because I was sitting there going, that's one, like, how do I display all of my jewels? Like mm -hmm. I need to display all of my jewels. Like you, I mean, you have the same, you know, or my hats, you know, as oh, I, have, yeah. I have a hat collection, but so it's like, I want, to see all of it so anyways yeah we're we, it'd be really great to have an, a mounting system for the sticks and you know i mean they're um they're they're fun for me i'm not like they don't need to be anything more yeah. than than walking sticks to me you know so but i am inlaying beads and doing all this like wacky texture to them which is really cool the resin and kind of laying it in again yeah kind of like yeah. Like if you were walking in the woods and all of a sudden you were like, what the heck is this thing? And you're like, oh my God, it's one of Nicole's walking sticks. A psychedelic stick is emerging from the forest. You're like, there's berries growing off of it. Oh my God. Yeah. 
anthropomorphized too, or like, because that's feathers. It almost is like a animal or like, oh, I love this. You're making yeah, accessory. Like what if you could mount them and take them down and then you use them? Oh, as, as functional objects. Okay, yes, yes. With your outfit. I mean, you know, not really, but maybe. This is know. your world though. This is what you're, this is what you're building though also. Yeah. All together. It's all going to be like one big party. It's like, I'm just going to, yeah, there'll be like, I'll have, I'll have mannequins, but then there'll also be people serving beverages, wearing the sticks and the ascots and maybe some fabric and my wallpaper that I just started printing. Oh yes. There's wall. Okay. There's wallpaper. Also you were screen printing pillows. Yeah. So many, right? I'm trying some stuff. I'm trying some stuff. Why not? Yeah. Now I'm just trying to figure out what to do with all the things, but yeah. First step, 2D work and everything <laughs> from there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. This is where you're putting a lot of your focus, it feels like right now. I think right now it's, I mean, we've talked, you and I have talked about this. Like, I think right now with everything that's going on to maintain to be excited about Lillian Astrofield and keeping the business and, and, you know, mm -hmm. forward moving, I have to sit and paint and draw all day. Um, yeah, at some point, like I have to at least carve out some time to be able to just, you know. Oh, it's meditation. People have been meditating more. And I'm like, my meditation is doing this. This is, it triggers the same part of my brain. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it helps me get through it. It's also immediate. It feels, compl I have completionism. If mm -hmm. I mean, sit down and make a piece and it's not, jewelry takes time, you know? And Francesca, I have, well, sorry, darling. Oh yeah. Um, I have well, wallpaper. Well, I do have a wallpaper sample, but it's downstairs. And if Brian is downstairs and he wants to bring it to me, I would love it. Okay. We have two minutes. <laughs> so oh, no, yes, two other minutes. One I'll post it. I'll post it online for you. <laughs> Please. Cause you have so many things to tell us. <laughs> it's like, we just, I forgot about the pillows. I forgot about this. I'm like, oh, 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 yes, yes. Oh, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's okay. We'll, we'll chat again, I'm sure. <laughs> yes, we will. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Oh my, oh my um, gosh. I hope it was fun for everybody. Yeah, amazing. Totally. Thanks, you guys. Thanks so much for joining. Um, happy Friday. Happy Friday, Nicole. Thank you, Happy sweetie. Friday. Ooh, ooh, here's my. It's, well, this isn't it. This isn't yours. Where's All right. Your wallpaper? Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Did he bring you wallpaper? He brought me wallpaper. I brought you wallpaper. <laughs> it's not the wallpaper. No, it's not the right one. <laughs> It's not the right one. <laughs> okay. C plus. You guys. He gets a C plus, but I what a darling. It's all right. <laughs> Gold star for trying. Gold star for trying. Okay.